Hey YouTube, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here is my review for UFC 138, Lieben vs. Munoz. Alright folks, but before I get on to reviewing this card, I have something to give away. Yep, right there. I had a contest for this card, it's for this Mark Munoz Form Athletics t-shirt, of course. And if you were subscribed and you picked the correct winner for the Lieben Munoz main event and the correct outcome, there was a potential that I could pick you to win this. A random winner was selected for picking Mark Munoz via second round TKO over Chris Lieben, and it's going to canned Kool-Aid. So thanks, boss, for participating, and look forward to getting this in the mail. Alrighty, folks, now we got the contest out of the way with. Let's take a look at this card from top to bottom. So let's start with the main event between Mark Munoz and Chris Lieben. Yeah, it was a real easy fight for me to predict, and it's just as easy reviewing it. Mark Munoz had the wrestling edge. Chris Lieben really does have wrestling defense, and that's why the onus was on Mark Munoz to win. So either one of two things was going to happen. Mark Munoz was going to win via his wrestling, or he was going to stand with Chris Lieben, and Chris Lieben was going to knock him out. So how do you pick either? The answer... Just take a look at the Damian Maya fight. If Damian Maya was able to K1 Mark Munoz, Mark Munoz will not stand with Chris Lieben. Thus, Mark Munoz will wrestle him. And that's what I thought was going to happen. That That's what we saw. I actually picked a second round TKO for Mark Munoz. A uh, solid win for Mark Munoz. He got takedowns. He was able to ground Chris Lieben uh, with some difficulty, though. But for the most part, he was able to unload with that um, those fists, you know, ground and pound. And he was opening up a cut on uh, Lieben's uh, left eyebrow or something. And eventually Chris Lieben couldn't see, so it was stopped after round two. So solid win for Mark Munoz. Uh, his MMA wrestling, as usual, looked sloppy. But luckily for him, he was facing Chris Lieben again with real no wrestling defense. So uh, yeah, easy fight for Mark Munoz. Who do you give him now? You know, I think Chael Sonnen makes the most sense, but with Chael Sonnen's mouth, he's probably getting Anderson Silva. He'd probably lose that fight because Chael is pretty much better everywhere except for maybe the power department, but Chael should outclass him there. But uh, as for Chris Lieben, who do you give him? I'm trying to think of guys who are on a losing streak. I think Dan Miller makes the most sense. Uh, they both have more heart than they do skills, and they haven't fought each other yet, so I think that would be a good fight. But folks... Let's move on. Let's take a look at that bandweight bout between Brad Pickett and Henry Morrell. Uh For how long it lasted, guys, it was uh, definitely a solid fight. It was good enough to win the main event. Um, not main event, the fight of the night. So uh, props to both guys for throwing on the show. Uh, Brad Pickett, you know, solid display of boxing. Henry Burrell, you know, he did his thing with his Muay Thai. Uh, he was able to uh, land combinations early against Brad Pickett, but eventually Brad Pickett found his range he uh, started moving in and out of the pocket better, landing combinations. And uh, he looked well on his way to win a unanimous decision like I thought he would. And eventually, Henan Burrell just found an opening, went for a knee. He got it. Brad Pickett just got cracked by that knee. And uh, he went down. Henan Burrell followed him to the ground with punches. And he saw that Brad Pickett's back was open, so he went for a rear naked choke. Uh, the way he took Brad Pickett's back was just plain sexy and probably the coolest thing I saw tonight. So, uh, yeah. Props to uh, Hen Burrell for finishing Brad Pickett like that. I didn't think he would finish Brad Pickett with a choke um, after he hurt him. I didn't think it was possible for Burrell to hurt Brad Pickett on the feet. He did. So he basically beat Pickett everywhere. Props to Burrell. That was kind of sexy. So, yeah, Burrell's a scary dude. Who do you give him next? Scott Jorgensen makes sense for me. Uh, they both beat Brad Pickett, and they're both uh, working their way up to a title shot. Jorgensen already has one. We'll see what happens if that uh, fight happens. I think that makes a lot of sense, and I thought I think it'd be pretty good. Uh, as for uh, Brad Pickett, though, you know, Brad Pickett's still a very solid fighter. And, uh, yeah, he just got beat by a better one in Burrell, as we saw. But I think he should get someone like Eddie Wineland. Uh, after this fight, Brad Pickett's hovering around... Uh, you know, lower part of the top 10 list, and I think uh, Eddie Wineland is too. They're both coming off losses, so why not make that happen? But again, between Burrell and Pickett, for how long it lasted, solid fight, definitely deserving of fight of the night. Congrats to uh, Penn Burrell. All right, folks, moving on. Let's take a look at that welterweight belt between Tiago Alves and Papi Betty. 
Guys, Papi Abedi hasn't fought in over a year. He really isn't that polished in terms of, you know, his overall MMA game. He's a UFC newcomer. What did you think was going to happen to him? Of course, he lost to Thiago Alves. Uh, Papi Abedi doesn't use his grappling enough in his fights from what I saw. And then I saw it again here. You know, he should have kept clinching up against um, the cage with Thiago Alves. You know, once they're somewhere in the center, you know, Thiago Alves was backing Abedi up. And then he cracked him with that punch, followed him down to the ground with more punches. Eventually, Abedi gave up his back. Thiago Alves wins via rear naked choke. Saw a win for Thiago Alves. But again, what did you think was going to happen? You know, Papi Abedi is a prospect. He has solid skills, solid judo. He still has solid hands, although he's pretty wild, but he definitely has power. But um, he's definitely not ready for the Thiago Alves of the world in that welterweight division. Hell no, he should be facing the young guns of that division, you know, with the prospects or, you know, just the younger guys who aren't that good because, for the most part, he's on that level. He should not be beating any of the top 10, top 15s yet. So I would like to have seen Poppy Betty make his debut against you know, a Matt Riddle or a Demarcus Johnson, someone like that. But to go up against Tiago Alves, who have, you know, who's beaten, you know, top fives, top tens, yeah, it's not a good look, and I don't know why the UFC was trying to pull that. Maybe they're just trying to make Tiago Alves look good. I guess they haven't gave up on him, but whatever. But as for Tiago Alves, well, who do you give him? I think Diego Sanchez makes a lot of sense. You know, they haven't fought each other yet, and now they're both coming off wins. And they're kind of in the same spot in the division right now. So make that happen. But again, solid win for Tiago Alves. Alrighty, folks. Let's move on. Let's take a look at that lightweight belt between Terry Edom and Edward Faloto. Actually, let's skip that. That's why MMA, UFC specifically, is a joke. Whatever. Edward Faloto. God, dude. He has two wins over people without Wikipedia pages. Got signed to the UFC. Got two losses. And is on the main card with Terry Adam. Why? Because they want to make Terry Adam look good. But they're going to do it at the expense of jobbers. You know, real sports don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, sports that are ran correctly, I mean. You know, the NBA is not going to put up their team against, you know, some high school basketball team. That's basically what this was in terms of skill set. Because that's how much better Terry Adam is to Edward Falolodo. So, whatever. Really don't want to expand on it. Terry Adam, who does he get? Cole Miller or Tiago Tavares? I think that would make sense. Uh, Edward Falolodo, he gets cut. You know, I really don't like saying people should get cut. But I gotta tell it out is, you know, I'm a critic. That's what I do. But folks, let's move on. Let's take a look at that light heavyweight bout between Anthony Prosh, Ciro Jabade. Yeah, Jabade, I thought we would be able to keep Prosh at bay and eventually finish him via strikes in round one. That didn't happen. But for the most part, he was able to do so early uh, by just, you know, sticking the jab in his face and trying to work combinations, avoiding, you know, takedown attempts. But eventually, Parash was able to uh, take him down in round one, and that set the pace for the rest of the fight because he was able to take uh, Jibade down two in round two. And then from there, he worked for the rear naked choke and got it. So, solid win for Anthony Parash. I didn't think his takedowns were good enough. But if he still found himself there with uh, Jabari, I thought he'd finish him. And he did. But, uh, yeah, my pick went awry. Damn it, Ciro Jabari. But good win for Anthony Parash. Who would you give him next? I don't know, Brandon Vera. You no, know, for the most part, Brandon Vera is going to try to do what Jabari did and should, you know, be able to succeed at that. But... You know, both these guys aren't very good in the light heavyweight division. And uh, I think that fight makes sense. As for Jibade, uh Fabio Maldonado comes to mind. I don't know. But uh solid win for Anthony Prosh. Let's move on. Alright, folks. But let's move on. Let's take a look at the rest of the card. The preliminary card bouts now. Let's just run through it. John McGuire over Justin Edwards. I actually didn't catch that bout. But McGuire won 30-27. So that's pretty decisive. Unfortunately, I picked Justin Edwards. Uh, next up, Rob Broughton versus Philip DeFries. I think Philip DeFries can win the decision. Um, apparently, uh, Rob Broughton had a really scary uh, second round, but Philip DeFries rebounded round three and he got the decision 29 28. Solid uh, win for DeFries. I actually caught the Michihiro Omigawa bout, so for him to win via a decision, uh, you know, puts a smile on my face because, you know, he is an exciting fighter. I do like him. 
and uh, glad he got his first win in the UFC um, over Jason Young. Jason Young really one-dimensional. He let uh, Omegawa's judo get the best of him. He made that look simple come round two and three. So a uh, solid win for Michihiro Omegawa. Uh, next up, Chris Cole versus Sheamus. Sheamus, TKO, round one, 40 seconds in. Yeah, I picked Sheamus to win via first or second round TKO. Can't remember, but I thought he'd make it look easy. And he did, so solid win for Sheamus. And of course, uh, Chris Carriasso versus Von Lee in Bantamweight. Carriasso won via split D. Did not catch that belt. But uh, good good win for uh, Chris Carriasso because I heard good things about Von Lee. But there it is, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. I know it was kind of quick, kind of half-assed, but I do what I can. But uh, yeah, again, thank you for all the support. Once again, stay tuned for my UFC on Fox picks. They should be up shortly. And yeah, subscribe if you like what you see. So there it is. Thanks again. Thanks for the support and take care.